Welcome back to DXB Today, where now we're going to take a little step back from fertility and talk about eyesight. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Sandeep Mitra from Al Zahra Hospital. Thank you so much for joining us, Doctor. Thank you very much for now, inviting me. Now, you are the head of ophthalmology. Uh, yes. Can you tell us how that's different from an optician or optometrist? Uh, the optician and optometrist, they just do the basic initial evaluation, which actually, uh, when you come into the clinic, they just take your history, uh, they check your glasses, and they check your ocular motility, and, and that's it. And then they stop there, or sometimes they'll go ahead and do some investigations, like checking eye pressure. Uh, sometimes if you have a history of glaucoma, for example, we do some imaging for your eyes. So they do the basic primary work before you are presented to the doctor. So they are just like a startup for us. So I think most people, when they think of ophthalmology, they think of laser eye surgery. So being able to take off your glasses and you know, use an eye laser as an avenue to be able to make your eyesight better. Can you talk to us a little bit about laser eye surgery? So laser eye surgery is a, a very, very old type of surgery. It's been there for many years. It was started way back in Russia, for example, where people were having laser correction by using blade. Mm. So over a period of time, now we have microsurgery, robotic assisted surgery. So it has evolved over time. So you must have heard about LASIK, for example. Yes. yes. So LASIK was uh, a, a sort of type of surgery where you make a flap like an envelope, mm -hmm. you open it up, do the surgery and then the flap closes, the next day you are fine. Uh, we have now even better, mm -hmm. which is called the microsurgeries, where we don't make flaps at all. Okay. So these are called the smile surgeries or the small incision lenticular extraction, just like any type of uh, microsurgery where you don't make a flap and you recover faster. Yeah, because with the LASIK as well, there were a lot of people that maybe could, weren't suitable for the surgery, uh, surgery, for example, like if you had astigmatism or something. So with this new method of uh, eye surgery, can, is everybody applicable and suitable yes, for it? Yes, uh, uh, everybody applicable? No. Okay. There is a criteria. We have a limitation of any form of surgery. So we can correct up to minus 12 diopters okay. of spherical power and we can correct up to minus five diopters of cylindrical power. So that's what we, the limitations are. If you are above those power, yes, then you cannot do LASIK. You have other procedures wherein you can uh, remove your glasses, like ICL, for example, implanting contact lens mm -hmm. inside the eye. So that can also correct your vision, and it's also very safe. Incredible. Dr. Sandeep, I've had glasses since I was six years old and I looked very nerdy in them. They used to call me Spexy in school back in the day. And I didn't have a lot of eye power. I think it was just 1.75, 1.5. But I did do the LASIK surgery maybe over 10 years ago, only because I had difficulty reading the teleprompter. After the surgery, I realized that it's not my eyes, it's just me. But anyway, it's been many years and I feel like it's not quite 100%, but it is still way better. Do you think LASIK is more suitable for people who have a bigger, a higher eye power than the ones who don't? So it's it's not that way. Yep. You can do LASIK for small numbers as, as little as 0.5. You can do LASIK up to minus 12 diopters. The problem is if you are going to correct higher numbers, there is a chance that it might regress over time. So for example, you correct minus 12, after five years down the lane, you might get, a, get back minus one or minus two and then you might have to retreat or you might have to go back to glasses. Whereas in your case, for example, you were minus 1.25 or 1.5 that you said, if you are, it should have been corrected fully. Mm. If you are getting back your numbers, you can revisit your doctor, uh, he can check you again, and this, um, this can be treated again. So that same envelope which we opened and corrected, we can, we can open it again up to 10 years. Okay. So we can open it again and close it and do the retreatment but you have to go through the same process of evaluation again. Okay, so I have a question. I uh, was thinking about getting LASIK last year and I didn't for various reasons and my eyesight changed rather dramatically last year. I'm now in my late 40s uh, and I've been told that I'm in this sort of window where it's not really indicated that my eyesight's gonna change so much. Is that, is that true? Are there windows where, where it doesn't make sense for people? You're right, uh, there is windows but 40 is not the limitation now anymore. 
We have technology which, which is called Press Beyond. Uh, it's a method of improving vision for far and near. Uh, of course, it's a different technology. We need to explain more about it, but you can get uh, your eye uh, treated with that uh, treatment called Press Beyond, which allows you to see far and near with laser. If your numbers are fluctuating over time, yes, that's not the time to intervene. Mm -hmm. So you have to wait, especially people who are pregnant, for example, or uh, mothers who are feeding, breastfeeding, we don't do that. Or if you are on any medication, for example, you're on steroid therapy, you cannot go and do laser. So the most important criteria is that your number should be steady for at least a year or a year and a half, and there should not be a change more than 0.5 diopters. So that's the most important thing. Mm. So yes, you probably need to wait. Okay. <laughs> well, you heard it here first, Cathy. <laughs> <laughs> well, but thank you so much, Dr. Sandeep, for giving us an insight into the world of ophthalmology. Insight, I like it. <laughs> thank you. I see what you did Someone there. got the dad joke, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for joining us on the show. It's been a pleasure to have you. Thank, thank you very you. much, thank you. Now I believe it is time for DXB in 60. Ash, you're Absolutely. the one with the lady with the questions. Yes, I have some questions for you, Cassie. Are you ready? Oh. <laughs> you need to answer as many questions as possible within 60 seconds, okay? okay? Hey. And your time, three, two, one, let's go. If you weren't in the healthcare industry, where would you be working? Uh, I used to be a filmmaker back in my hometown in Los Angeles. I was a documentary filmmaker, so I'd be doing that. Versatile. Your top tip for optimal health? Sleep as much as you can. If you could choose one superpower, what would it be? Uh, to be able to go anywhere in time and space with, uh, just by snapping my fingers. I thought you'd say to make anyone pregnant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your inspiration. <laughs> uh, this is going to be the cheesiest thing that I've said today, but it's definitely my children and having them see me making an impact in the world. A book you're reading at the moment. Uh, I am reading uh, this really great book called The Wager uh, about a mutinous uh, shipwreck in the 1700s and it's fabulous. Top podcast recommendation. Uh, I am really loving, uh, oh gosh, there's a lot that I'm listening to right now. There's one called Left, Right and Center about the American political system that uh, I'm, I am really addicted to. Okay, your time's up, um, but I'm gonna ask you one last question anyway. Why Dubai? Uh, husband's job, <laughs> uh, and it's fabulous. It's, it's been an extraordinary place to raise children and to have children, and uh, I've just met the best people here. Well, Cassie, it's been absolutely wonderful having you on the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And Dr. Sandy, thank you so much for being with us as well. Thank you very much. Right now, we are gonna go over to the fridge in El Cercal Avenue, where our roving reporter, Shahir, is catching up with some of our talents. Let's check it out. What's up guys, we are back at the fridge in Al Sirkal and I am joined by MJ Shakir. MJ, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Of course, pleasure is all ours, MJ. Um, can you start off by telling us how did you get into music and what has your story been? Wow, that's a great question. Uh, I started when I was young, I was singing at school and then uh, I started doing the guitar in 2010. I merged into music production two years later, sound engineering sound design, a lot of stuff, playing with frequencies. Yeah, but it's a long journey. It's more than, I would say, 15 years now. Yeah. Amazing, and what has been, maybe one, maybe two, but highlights of your career that you cherish close to your heart? 2015, The Voice Middle East, and then uh, Expo opening were the two of the, two of the highlights of my life, yeah. And you don't sing in just one or two languages. You do multiple languages all at once sometimes. Can you tell me a bit more about that and who you're singing to? I think I try to sing multiple languages as part of the uh, multicultural platform that, it, that UAE provides for artists. And uh, the cool thing about UAE is like you get to merge with other cultures. And if you're open, you, you learn so fast. So I sing uh, French, English, Arabic, Sudanese, Hindi, and I try to go Latin. Well, well said, Amjad. Thank you so much for joining us. Can't wait to see you perform. Guys, stay tuned after this very short break to check out Amjad on stage. <laughs> 